Hello guys, let's talk a little bit more about enthalpy, specifically about the enthalpy of the reaction or delta H of the reaction, which is the change in enthalpy that occurs during a reaction. So if I have a sample reaction where A is my reactant forming C, the product, the delta H of this reaction can be, let's say, plus 100 kilojoules. All right. We also learned previously that enthalpy is a state function. This means that you can take several steps to get to the product from the reactant. So, for example, you can get from A to C directly, or first you can form B in one reaction, and in a second reaction go from B to C. And the change in enthalpy will be the same, doesn't matter which route you are taking. For example, if you go from A to B, the enthalpy of that reaction might be minus 20 kilojoules. And from B to C, it's going to be plus 120 kilojoules. So when you add minus 20 to plus 120, you are going to get 100 kilojoules so exactly the same amount doesn't matter which route you are taking and by the way remember that if the enthalpy has a positive value you have an endothermic reaction endothermic reaction and if the enthalpy has a negative value you are going to have an exothermic reaction meaning that in case of an endothermic reaction our system is gaining heat and during an exothermic reaction we are going to lose heat. So enthalpy is also an extensive property. This means that if you double the amount of the reactants and products, your enthalpy change will also double. So for example, if I have the reaction 2A making 2C products, my enthalpy change associated with reaction will be two times 100 kilojoules just because my original reaction for half of the amount was 100 kilojoules. Okay, I hope this makes sense so far. So enthalpy is a lot of fun because you get to play with it. For example, at the reaction enthalpy equal in magnitude but opposite to sign to the enthalpy change for the reverse reaction. So we can go ahead and actually reverse uh, this A to C reaction and have C forming A product. In that case, the change in enthalpy of the reaction will equal in magnitude, so it's still going to be 100 kilojoules. However, opposite in size, so this is going to become an exothermic reaction. All right, enthalpy also depends on the state of the reactants and the products. Okay, we are going to talk about that in more detail in other videos. Now, Let's take a look at Hess's law. So Hess's law is based on the fact that the reaction enthalpy is actually a state function, so you can get to the same change in enthalpy whether you are taking the reaction in one step or in several steps. So we are going to have an overall reaction which you can take in several steps, and this is what I'm going to show you on this slide. So first we have an overall reaction in which we have carbon reacting with water, producing carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas. And let's try to actually perform this reaction using the two other reactions that we have here. So reaction one where we have carbon plus oxygen gas forming CO2 and reaction two where we have two moles of hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas forming water. So how does Hess's law work? When working on these type of problems, you first advise to look at the reactants and the products in the overall reaction. So in the overall reaction, our first reactant is solid carbon. Do we have solid carbon in any other reactions here? Did you find it? Is it there? It's there, right? It is in reaction number one. Okay, so let's take a look at the next reactant in the overall reaction. We have water there. Do we have water in reaction one or reaction two? We do, right? It is a 
product in reaction two. Hmm. It is weird because in the overall reaction, it's on the reactant side, but we will take care of it in a few minutes. So let's move on to the reactants in the overall reaction. We have CO2. We also have CO2 on the product side in reaction one. And then we have H2 gas and we also have H2 gas in reaction two, but on the wrong side, on the reactant side. So how can I get to the overall reaction manipulating reaction one and reaction two? Well, obviously my hydrogen gas and water gas on the wrong side compared to the overall reaction and reaction two. So the first step that I want to do, I want to reverse reaction two, okay? So what I want to do, I want to reverse this. So if I reverse this reaction, then I'm going to have two moles of H2O gas forming two moles of H2 gas plus O2 gas. What is the enthalpy change associated with this reaction? I'm going to call this delta H minus 2 because it's the reverse of reaction 2. The enthalpy change is going to be the same in magnitude but reversed in size. So in this case, it's going to be plus 483.6 kilojoules. So the same in magnitude reverse in size. Okay. Are my reactants and products on the right place in reaction 1 and reaction 2 compared to the overall reaction? They are right now, right? Because my water is on the reactant side, just like in the overall reaction, and my hydrogen gas is also on the product side, just like in the overall reaction. So what can I do now with reaction one and reaction two, or its reversed version, to actually get the overall reaction? I can add them up together. Let me show you how. So I'm going to use this reaction and add it with the reversed version of reaction two. I'm going to start with the reactant in reaction one. So I have carbon as a solid, right? It's right here. Plus the next reactant is O2 gas. Now you might ask, but there is no O2 gas in my overall reaction. What will happen to it? Let's wait and see. Maybe we can cancel it out. Okay, do we have any other reactants in reaction one or reaction two? We do, right? We still have water there. So I need to add two moles of H2O gas. And then that's it. Now I have to look at my products. And my products are, I'm going to start with CO2 from reaction one, CO2 gas, plus, since I have no other reactants there, hydrogen gas from the second reaction, H2 gas, two moles of that, and oxygen gas. Okay, now the question is, we have oxygen gas on both on the reactant and on the product side, and we have the same amount. So because it's there at the beginning and at the end of the reaction, nothing happened to it, I can simply cancel that out. All right, now let's take a look at the overall reaction and the reaction that I got from adding reaction one to the reversed reaction two. So we have carbon solid, it's also here, two moles of water, also here, CO2 gas, also here, H2 gas, also here, and that's it. So I literally got back my overall reaction by adding reaction one to the reverse reaction two. Okay, now how can I calculate the enthalpy change associated with the overall reaction if I only know reaction one and reaction two enthalpy changes? Well, because I added the two reactions together, I can do the same thing with the enthalpy changes. So I can take delta H one 
plus delta H minus 2 because I need the reverse reaction. So minus 393.5 kilojoules plus 483.6 kilojoules. Remember that I'm taking the flipped reaction, so 483.6 kilojoules is going to be positive. Now, if you do this calculation, you are actually going to get 90.1 kilojoules. How much is that? This is exactly the same that I have as my reaction enthalpy for the overall reaction. So we can see that Hess's law works, and it's actually a lot of fun uh, to play around with different uh, reactions, manipulate them, flip them. You can even multiply them, right? Because we know that delta H is an extensive property. So when you multiply the reaction by two, you also multiply the delta H by two, so forth. So I hope you will have fun doing Hess's law questions and see you in the next video.